welcome to Fiber Hustle. My name is Chip. My name is Aaron. I love to sew beautiful quilts and I am the social distancing world champion 2020. You are. I like to knit and crochet and I didn't have anything else clever to say. But I write, oh, namaste six feet away. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you like to watch. You do, episode 25. It's our 25th episode. That's, uh, it's not bad. That's 25? A, it's special. We haven't seen 25 ever, but we've only seen it once, but we've never seen it ever. It's been a while since we've seen 25. <laughs> no, that's awesome. But we've never seen 25 before. This is the first time we're seeing 25. Look at us wearing our social distancing shirts as well. It continues, so we might as well be, uh, Get, support, getting, support the social distancing. Support the social distancing and then collect memorabilia. Someday I'm going to pass this on to nobody. <laughs> You're going to pass it on to my nephew. I'll pass it on to my nephew. He'll be like, I don't want this. Uh, I don't want any of this. It's nice to see you. It's great to see you. Thank you for joining us, new friends, old friends, all kinds of friends. You know what? You said something the other day, and it's like we have people who are just coming into contact We'll take it easy on you, ish. But let's go ahead and uh, reintroduce ourselves. Um, so we're in Seattle, Washington, and I started sewing maybe four years ago. I think you are correct, Chip. I started out uh, sewing clothes because I was in a store and I saw the price tag. I saw where it was made and I was like, oh, I can make that. And so I asked for my birthday, I asked for a sewing machine, and you got me a sewing machine. I was very machine. hesitant, because I'm like, what the hell is he going to do with a sewing machine? But look at him now. Look at me now. You can't stop me. Can't, you can't. Literally, you can't stop you. I can't stop myself. <laughs> so when did you start? I picked up. I did a loom for it. So we were always at Joanne's, Michael's, something like that. So I was sitting there. I had no interest in sewing. So I picked up a loom one day, did a hat. Then um, I had a friend who got sick, and she goes, hey, can you make me one? I said, yes. So I loomed about five hats and sent them off to the hospital. And then I started crocheting just because I started to get into yarn and stuff like that. And during my crocheting journey for about a year, I knew I liked the look of uh, knit sweaters and things like that. So I said, I have to make that. I tried knitting several times. It just wasn't clicking in the brain. I think it was the, the whole cast on thing. I was too tight and trying to go back. It was just a mess. I tried knitting too, and it gave me anxiety. It was like doing the same thing over and over again. I, it it just repetitive. gave me, it was too repetitive. Whereas like sewing, I'm always trying to correct a problem of my own creation. And, mm -hmm. but you're always doing something different and something new. And so. Something new? New. Something new. New. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I picked up knitting. Me and my buddy Jason took a knitting class from uh, Tara. I don't think she watches the show. At Joann's. And she got me over the hurdles of how to cast on and knit. I started knitting uh, by throwing. It just wasn't working since I was crocheting with holding my yarn here. So then I learned how to cut mental knit, which was much easier. And then I just kind of took off, fell in love with it. And then, uh, like a bunch of other gentlemen who do podcasts, I didn't see many people like me or any guys' perspectives. So I well, we didn't know where to look. Didn't know where to look. Well, back then, back then, two whole years ago, there really wasn't that many guys. Now you can't swing a cat without hitting <laughs> a new podcaster, which is great. Which is great. There's so which many people out there. I think you know. I mean, like in our short little time, it's like I feel like you're gonna cringe. I feel like the Podfather <laughs> because it's like we're doing something right, and it's like we've. We've made a lot of good friends through the interwebs, and like we have our our hustlers who are in it to win it with us, and we've built our we found our 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 tribe. Yeah, we did, and I love it. And people come and they're like, "Hey, what are you using for a mic? Hey, what are you using for a camera? <laughs> hey, what are you doing here editing?" And it's like, I mean, like I take that as a compliment that it we're doing something right. Our might makes my nobody asked me how to do something on my makes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Rude. But I actually started to do the podcast myself. I recorded one episode myself, and I was like, "This isn't working." So then I said, "Will you please do something with me because I can't do it by myself?" And what then, do you mean for your side hustle? No, for just the whole podcast. 
I was gonna do it by myself. Were you? Yeah. I like recorded an episode up here. It was all awkward and weird. Oh, I'm, see, I like watching Chip Connor on TV. Yes. On the phone, so you, on the you're iPad. You're like Alyssa Edwards when you pass yourself on TV I'm and like, on the mirror. Oh, like, oh, oh. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, that's us in a nutshell. Now, I do have a bone to pick. Talking about all of these new podcasters. That, no, that one, new one? There's a new one that is stealing our shit. Literally everything. Our whole look. Everything we do, they do. And I don't want to, this is, I don't want to call out culture, but. You know who you are. They, two ladies. Two ladies. From, I don't even know where they're from. I think they said they're from Seattle. Are they? Yes, I think they're from Seattle. I think they actually called themselves something like Fiber Hustle. And it's ridiculous. It is weird. I mean, like, we, I mean, like, yes. Maybe you want to, I don't know. Take a look. Who are these dames? <laughs> they stole our background. They stole our name and shirts. They stole my chubby cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> they almost have my unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> Johan, one day, out of nowhere, sends us this picture, and I fell out laughing. I mean, look at you. You have the sweetest eyes. Oh, I look like I'm helping daddy with the cows later. I, I, mean, I mean, look at them shoulders. You look, you look, uh, you look sturdy. I love her arms. Her arms look like she might need a little shave or a little bick or something like that. You look. That's not me. I'm sorry. She looks, she has those perfect teeth. And it's just, I don't know what to say about it. I would give her, um, I, I think she needs a little less sculpting with the eyebrows. <laughs> She's got nice bosoms. Uh, they're a little, little <laughs> wonky. Um, and I would suggest some lip filler, like plump up her lips. <laughs> yes, exactly. I think this is amazing and disturbing at the same time. What a day and age. I mean, like, you can become anybody you want to be. <laughs> you can. He showed this to me when I was on a call at work. He's like, this girl. I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> it was disturbing. Oh my Seriously, God. if you would have showed me just the girl on the right, I would have not known. The left, I would be like, oh, now I get it. But yeah. No, I mean, like, I don't even really see you. I just Are you see, serious? I really don't. I, I mean, she looks sweet. I mean, yes, she's, she's kind of got the hair masking her trucker hat. <laughs> She's got the cock hat. She's wearing her <laughs> cock hat. So that girl is out there for the night. My girl, I, I, I pity her because she she just can't keep a curl. <laughs> she got that straight, flat hair. Aww. That was a good time in a couple months ago when people were playing around with the oh my god whatever app that was. I don't even know what it so, was. So, Johan, you're in trouble. <laughs> Thank oh. you. But don't tune into them. We want them canceled. We want them canceled. Yes. There's only one fiber hustle. There's only one. There's only one. All right, so um, you have been on vacation. I've been on vacation. Um, I've taken several day trips. Uh, with COVID times, I've been avoiding anything that is city related or lots of people. And uh, if it wasn't for COVID times, I would probably say, hey, I'm taking off for a few days, pack a tent or uh, book a room somewhere and kind of stay. But I went out for a few hours many hours and come back. So I went, saw Diablo Lake, which was the most perfect, gorgeous, aqua looking water. Diablo. Di Diablo Lake, or is it like Diablo? Diablo Lake, which I was like, look at this, it's gorgeous. You're like, looks like something's wrong with the water. Oh, it was turquoise. Yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> and then I went to, went fishing around Roslyn. I didn't catch anything again. Roslyn's where they shot Northern Exposure. I love that show. And Lake Kachess and Golden, just a bunch of places. I just did some day trips, and I got a power washer from a friend who got a new one, so I got his old one. So I power washed all around the house, and yo, that is yo. He the steps look phenomenal. I looked like oh my god. I rolled had, around in a pig pen. He but, had mud covered. All, this is why I don't go outside. But look at you. You are like. Tan. I am. You were like getting some color. You have you have no color. I have you no color. Can't, yeah, you probably yeah. can't see her there. But yeah, but that's you. So it, that's it that's is what it is. Then you. So um, someone had a birthday. 
birthday. Me did. You had a birthday a couple days ago? I did. Happy something. We don't need to tell everybody. It is my 47th birthday. 47th birthday. I ordered, pre-ordered him some fabric that should be here sometime in August. I got to choose it. We got a Dairy Queen cake. Ice cream cake, yes. A Dairy Queen ice cream cake. I woke up at 6.30 and went to Krispy Kreme in Issaquah, which is like a 20 minute drive, just there's, to get you donuts. There's a half eaten one right over there, there that is. I would love to finish. And I was looking yesterday, or a couple, actually it was a couple days ago, and I got him this card last year, which we are Pose fans. <laughs> so it's a llama that says live laugh, love, and then I taped a little pose thing on here, and you said that was one of the most creative things that I have got you, and you were very happy with it. I love it. that. And I was like, how am I gonna top this this year? Yeah. So Chip Connor, we have Miss Dominique Jackson on here, Miss Electra, who has sent you a personal message no. for your birthday. Let me bring it up, let me, give me a second, everybody. No. -uh. Oh. Well, uh, hey Chip, this is so awesome. I just want to wish you a very, very, very happy birthday, darling. I hear you're a quilter. I don't know what that means or what it does or what you do, but I guess you quilt. Wait, quilt? You make quilts? Darling, that's awesome. Well, happy birthday to you. All the best to you. And darling, I want a quilt. I want foxes and furs and everything like that. My quilt must be amazing. And then I'll let you celebrate your birthday. Anyway, happy birthday, sweetheart. Erin loves you. And take care and all the best. Now get back to quilting, beast. <laughs> top, top. I am in utter shock. How, how, what? I just made it happen. Happy birthday. Oh my God, Mwah. oh my. Dude, I wanna be <laughs> her when I grow up. <laughs> How? Oh wait, y'all, I am. I have had that for stunned. many days and I don't know why I've been nervous and I was like, when do I show it? I was like, let's do it on the podcast. But yes, that was Miss Dominique Jackson who plays Electra and Pose and you got a little birthday greeting from her. I am stunned. She said, get back to quilting, beast. Beast. Okay. <laughs> so I, okay. So now next year I got to bring her here. That has to be, that has to be my next quilt. <laughs> Pose or what? Honey, the goddess that is Electra. <laughs> goddess that is Dominique. Electra. Yes. So there you go. I am in utter shock. Sorry, did I just derail the whole show? No, but like, wow. Thank you so, how did you even do that? You can do anything these days. <laughs> you can do anything these days. I am in It is the Cameo shock. app. Look it up if you're looking for a celebrity shout out. There's tons of celebrities out there with tons of different prices. <laughs> That is probably the most amazing gift that I didn't touch <laughs> that I've ever received. Yay, I did good. That was amazing. Good. Thank you so much. So um, if we're, um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, bring it back. Okay, so I need you to do me a favor. Mm -hmm. We've, we, uh, who the hell cares? We've been watching Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, cares? our wrap up is done. <laughs> we've, I mean, like, I was gonna give you a, a kind of wrap up of like what we are, catch up on what we've been watching. We watched the whole series of Harry Potter. Who the hell cares? <laughs> but we have been watching Taskmaster, which yes. it's on a little channel called YouTube. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of it. <laughs> I need you to tell everybody, like, this is the host. This is the creator of the show. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's happening right now. Yeah. So, but yes, so we have watched a show called Taskmasters. It's a British show. It is on, uh, you can find it on YouTube. And it's, they have comedians on. Each season has five different comedians. Eight, eight episodes. Eight episodes, five different comedians for the whole season. And it's really fun because they give them all kinds of different tasks. And it's how you get through tasks. Oh, I am delightful how you get through different tasks and what you do to get through them like in a different time. And what's fun um, is basically that- Basically like trying to get 
you have, there was a bathtub full of water and they had to get all the water out of the bathtub and see how different people approach different tasks. Problems. Problems and tasks. But with comedians, it's a little bit more fun. I think we're on season four. It's hosted by Greg Davies he is and so Alex. extremely tall. What's Alex's name? Hanging? Horn. Alex Horn. Alex Horn is the creator of the show. So the guy who sits in the little chair, the co-host, is actually creator of the show. It is so hilarious just because um, we've been we've been um, we watched one or two episodes before bed and one or two before bed it's a relaxing show and it's just like it just feels good and oh, i want to be on that show but i have a question for you oh god why is this a surprise episode or i it, well it was a surprise to me <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i surprised you finally no my question is question do we have a new roommate? God, what'd you do? No, it's not what I did. No. What is this about? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I forgot I put him on top of the washing machine. <laughs> So my old boss, two bosses now before this, like a year ago, I had like three bosses in here. She knew that I liked Tom Hardy, she likes Tom Hardy, and we would send Tom Hardy gifs to each other all the time. Then one day I walked into my office, just like a year ago, and Tom Hardy was on my desk. Is and he gonna pay rent? <laughs> he doesn't have to pay rent looking like that. So. When I went to the office two weeks ago to get different headphones, I was in and out. I was like, well, I can't leave Tom here by himself. And I didn't want anybody stealing Tom. So I brought him home, brought my headphones in, and something distracted me, obviously, like everything in life. And I think I just put him on top of the washing machine. And I totally forgot he was on there. I, yesterday, <laughs> went into the laundry room and I was looking and I turned the corner and I like I was I was rummaging looking for my stuff and then I turned the corner and I looked and I was like and it's across the room and I'm like is that Tom Hardy? <laughs> it is Tom Hardy and who wouldn't want Tom Hardy in their house? Come on. This is <laughs> when, Okay, so when he's coming out with the, the surprise and saying, to, you know, I'm just like, oh, yeah, it's cute that you're showing me a card that you made last year. <laughs> and, and you're like, and so how, was your, how are you going to top it? I thought you were going to whip this out. Oh, I was going to whip out Tom Hardy? <laughs> I did not whip out Tom Hardy. Uh, were you really expecting this? This is, when you, where you were going, I thought... I thought he was making a cameo. And what kind of reaction would you have been like, great, that was fun. I, I didn't, I, I was just, I was confused. Is he here to do my laundry? <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Tom Hardy do laundry and chores. <sighs> Shirtless. Okay. Um, well, that was a, just a great, whatever what just happened in the last 10 minutes. Where do we put him? We can put him in between us in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, Chip, Tom, Seamus, me. <laughs> I think we're fine. With that. So okay, we get, let's get into makes and stuff. But happy birthday again. Thank you. Mwah. There very much. That was a, a, like a mind blower. The cases are at work. The people are gonna gnash their teeth. <laughs> Good. They should be jelly. Oh my God. I'm. Wow. Okay, so we do have a show to get to. We do. Oh, um, look how much that's sticking out. I just realized that. I haven't had a haircut since January, and it is looking fine, you all. It's not. That's why I'm wearing a hat. A hat from my friend Hillary from Unalaska. Thank you, Hillary. I'm loving this Alaska hat. Okay. Okay. So um, we've got makes, dude. We've got or do that. We got a. Packed show. We have a packed show because we have been on the make. We have finished object after finished object after finished object. I mean, it's about time. We've been, you know. We haven't recorded since June. We we went. This June, is the show July. you've been waiting. This is the show. We got uh, a cow to announce. We have bingo to announce later. We're gonna show some finished objects, some things what we're working on. Okay, so um, Chip, you made that. Do you want me to say it? <laughs> Yeah, do it. It's up to you. Go. Chip. What? You made that? I did make that. 
<laughs> what did you make? <laughs> okay, I made a beautiful mess. And um, it's a gorgeous I, mess. I have been making this quilt back here, um, Pebble Cheer. It started out um, well over a month ago, and it was supposed to be this right here. Um, it was a pattern by Thomas Nauer. It's his design. And these are supposed to be uh, cinder blocks. It's called the cinder blocks qu uh, quilt. I followed the recipe, except for one thing. I didn't use his template for this piece. So what happened is I wound up with bigger size on there and it didn't, it didn't line up, which now it just looks like a churn dash. And everybody's like, oh, that, that, that's kind of a take on a churn dash. It's supposed to, not. But I was like, you know what? It's supposed to be what it's supposed to be. Um, so if you notice right here in the, in the center there, um, you've got little cutouts in the cinder blocks every so and again. And I have those and I kind of just went with it. And it, this, this quilt was one of those objects that it was, it, it was meant to be what it wanted to be, not something yeah, that I wanted to be. I can understand that. So the first thing that went wrong was the sizing. Then I went and said, okay, I got it all pieced together. I've got the color arrangement, cooking good. Then I went through and I kid you not, like a billion, if not a million, hand done pebbles. All of, I just like pebbled the hell out of it. So that took forever. And then this was, again, my first, um, my first quilt that I've done on the long arm. Mm -hmm. And it was a learning curve. So, you know, just trying to, uh, trying to find out the right tension. So the back was not so pretty. And so I'm like, okay, I know what I'll do. I'm just gonna finish the pebbling and then I'll do some echoing, which is what I did. Um, and then, no, I didn't do the echoing. That's how you don't think you did I didn't that. do the echoing. I took it off the frame and I was just gonna trim the outside and that's when this happened. I was trimming the um, exterior and I was in the middle of the, I was in the middle of the, the living room and I'm cutting with my scissors and all of a sudden that was one piece that was like, ugh, ooh. <laughs> I was like, that was a little thick. And I looked under and I realized I cut in the effing middle of the quilt. And I was I, there. I, no, just, I was stunned. I just, I just stared and I was just like, I didn't curse. I didn't say anything. I just stared at it. It's kind of like that girl on YouTube. Exactly like that. Poor thing, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna learn you how to curl your hair and then burn your hair off. God, that would be terrible. <laughs> her look on her face was exactly my look on the face. It was just utter shock, disbelief, stunned. And I was like, oh my God, I, quit. I cut in the middle of this quilt. I didn't get angry. And then I, I just finished doing it and I walked away. <laughs> Walked away. And then I thought about it. By the morning, uh, the next morning, I realized, hey, you know what would be really cool? What if I just put the name of the quilt across it and cover and mask that um, that cut? Was it named Pebble Cheer before this? It was. Okay. Yeah. And so then I took um, Super Structure Foam, and this is from So Much Cosplay. And this is a cosplay foam that is actually machine washable. And it's got um, some glue on both sides. And what you do is you just take your fabric and you put it, iron it on. And then, so what I did is I went in Illustrator and I found the font that I liked. And then I made that into a PDF, mm -hmm. and then I blew that PDF and kept playing with the sizing until I was happy, taped it all up on the window, and then 
once I had it all together, then I just trimmed it and made a copy of that onto the white fabric. So then, like this, always retains its shape. And so it's machine it washable, back, yeah. it bounces back, and I love it because um, it ended up becoming my, my wording, and then I did a satin stitch on the Bernina downstairs on the, the B780, and learned so much like in that process where I could have varied the stitch length um, in some of the corners. I mean, like I did cheer first and then I did pebble a couple of days later. And it's like, you can see the difference that I, I kind of learned. I haven't mastered, but I have learned a good technique to do it. And then- I think it's wonderful. What I, what I love, again, it was just like, it was meant to be this quilt. And how relatable is that? I mean, like we've all been in a position where it's like things aren't going the way you plan. Don't try to, don't try to make it something it no longer can be. Just like let it be what it needs to be. And another thing that I love is like we have the the pebbles are seem to be in the background. Then the echoing of the churn dashes is kind of like the mid ground. It's kind of mid puffy, and then real puffy in the foreground is the the lettering, the text. So I have middle, I'm sorry, I have uh, three different planes that I'm using on it. So where was the cut? It was somewhere here, right? It was oh, somewhere, here? it was I think right in here. Okay. And the way it cut was like that big. Wow. And it was just like, I, I'm so happy that it happened because it became what it was supposed to be. And- How big is it? So this one is 79 by 80. It's okay. almost square, but not quite. And you rounded the corners instead of made them. Mm -hmm. Rounded the square. corners because again, we're working with pebbles and round shapes. I think it's great. I mean, it's very obviously cheery. And it's heavy. It is heavy because remember I had, when doing all the pebbles, the back didn't look so great. So once I um, got to the point where I trimmed the edge, cut the center. <laughs> <laughs> then I um, put it uh, a new layer, a new back, more more batting. So there's actually three levels, three layers of, of fabric, two things of batting. So That's it's, why it's, so it's heavy, but it does have full motion. Um, Carrie, I know you were really worried about this. No, it's. It's very nice and warm. So this will be a good warm couch very blanket. Warm. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. I, you should be happy. I just don't know if it should be a couch blanket or hung up somewhere. Um, if I was going to hang it up, I would probably do it over the long arm. But yeah. Okay. I think it's very good. You should be very proud of yourself. I am very, very, very shocked that Dominique left me that message. <laughs> I'm sweating in here. <laughs> Oh my God, is that uh, hot in here? What time I've is it? I've been waiting to show that to you since it arrived. Oh my God, but who did you show it to? No one. You are literally the first person to see it. Well, mm -hmm. we are all the first people to see it. That is I insane. I didn't want that getting out. That is insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would die. You, we, we, you did almost. I didn't die. <laughs> I didn't die. Speaking of dying, so on my, I've always, please, I want everybody to know this, be aware. I want to pass away on my birthday. Not this year, but I, uh, you know this about me. I've always wanted to die on my birthday. I just want, I want that, but I'm not gonna be buried, so why do I worry about a tombstone? I, I don't know. But I just think that, you know, I like, I like symmetry. I'm, I'm so glad this turned into <laughs> How Chip Wants to Die podcast. <laughs> Let's get on that rabbit hole for a while. Aaron, you made that? <laughs> I did. How could I top dying? Um, I did, gang. This is awesome. So I finished my primrose blanket, and I don't know how to show it, and I don't want to hold it in front of your face. And I do see one end that's not weaved in because it's a lot of weaving in. Here. So this is the primrose blanket. The pattern is by Arnie and Carlos. Leon, let's stand up real quick. Look at that. I mean, come on. This is a obviously a crocheted blanket. Um, nice purple trim. Nice purple trim. It is not the fastest blanket in the world to make because you have to make, it's basically, 
in three different pieces. So you start here, you make this, it's all treble crochet. You make this first circle, then you make the outer circle, and then you make a bunch of them and you use this to connect them. It's a paid for pattern, so I can't tell you too much more. But in total, there are 246 little circles that I have made. And some of the blankets, it suggested like 500. And I was That's like- That's a big blanket. It's like, I ain't got time for that. But still, with that many, um, it is a five by five. And I thought about blocking it, but I don't want to block it because I'm afraid. Was that 60 by 60? It will strip. Again, with the numbers, I don't know. Five feet? Five feet, yes. 60. <laughs> then, it's, then it's a little bit more than 60 if it's five and a half. Sorry, five and a half by five and a half. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yes. So it's that. But um, I don't remember what you, I was saying. But anyways, <laughs> 246 <laughs> little circles. You got me sidetracked. Um, this is all leftover yarn. So uh, I, if I look, I really use a lot of dark yarns. So it is acrylic, it is wool, it is a mix of- It's got everything. It's got everything. <laughs> uh, some of these are actually two fingering weights held double. Uh, DK worsted, literally it has everything. Is there but, dead woman's yarn in this? <laughs> there, when you, like some people that have passed that left me yarn. Ah, I don't want to get into specifics. <laughs> But one of the things that I kind of love about it is I fell in love with like some color combos. Like this was a great like, like sampler. This one right here. I'm Oop. loving these three colors together. And I'm especially loving when this yellow and whatever this color is are next to each other. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that. I like that. Goes. I mean, like you could just go through and say like for color inspiration. Yeah, exactly. Like if you want to know how a sweater is going to look someday. Uh, like I like this red next to this blue right here. That's an electric blue. It is electric. Um, I tried this is to. Fun. Is that a weaved end? It, yes, it is. <laughs> the, there's so many ends I had to weave in. Now I tried to catch as much as I could when I was making it. I like but that. still, you have to weave in a bunch of ends. Then at the very end of it, I put a triple crochet border on. And then I did another triple crochet. These are, I don't even know what to call it. It's almost like a uh, granny square style. I don't know crochet terminology that well. And then I went back and just did a thicker border. And I was like, should I even put a thicker border on it? But I think we're fine. I think we're good. Like I love these colors next to each other. I think Ooh. this is a, I think this is a, some of these, I look at the yarn and go, oh, I know exactly what project I used that in. This is a, uh, oh, um, Ochre? Uh, ochre, yeah, it's ochre. Uh, Malabrigo. So yeah, um, you know what? I felt no time rush on this, and I think I started this in January. You felt and obsessed with it. Then there's sometimes I really got in, like some days I, I got my back itches. Oh. Um, I really got into it. Look at this. The color, all that white and green and whatever. Yeah. I wish, I know I got this yarn in Portland but I forget what it is. Oh, did we already look at this one? No. Oh. We looked at these kind of colors together, but it had a little blue or something like that. But um, I would make another one because I never felt a time rush for it because you would just make some of the uh, inner circles one day, then the next day you kind of fill them out with more, then you kind of you just kind of go back and forth. You don't have to put it all, like you have to do all these, then all these and all these. You could put sections together and just kind of work on it whenever you have time. So. I actually would totally make this again. My sister wants this, but I'm like, do I want to give it to her? <coughs> Excuse me, there is another one that um, Arn and Carlos did that it doesn't have the holes. Yeah, I know you're not, you're not thrilled about how much you can see through here. No, no, no. I, Ooh, I like this. I Look love this. this. That's almost the, very sunflowery. Yeah, I love that color combo. No, but they may, there's another version of this um, and yes, it is another paid pattern, but oh, hold on, I want to show this one. That's fine. That one's pretty. I like. That is pretty. Like, I, like it's got a, a starburst. All the ones that sunburst. are pretty have this color. I notice as the accent. All the ones that were like, oh, I like that. For some reason, this color makes everything else. Well, pop. because you've got a light, a medium, and a dark. Yeah, just like we got here. Yep. 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 But again, Arn and Carlos, Primrose. Uh, Very successful. I don't know what the difference between a throw and a blanket is. 
I don't know what a, a lap blanket is. I mean, like, I don't, I, I don't sit up. If I'm on a couch, I'm down. Sleeping. Sleeping. Let's watch a movie five minutes later. <laughs> I'm like, great, another movie I get to watch twice. Not during Pose. <laughs> Not very true, you've never fell asleep during Pose. But no, I'm in love with that. I can't wait for a photo shoot with it. Uh, I'm thinking like Burt Reynolds, 1970s, when he's on that carpet, and I show my carpet. Oh, God. No? Aaron, you made that? <laughs> <laughs> what else did you make? <laughs> okay. Um, I made the Storyteller Cow. You just lost some needles. Ah, that's fine. By Ethan Pyle. And Pyle is P Y L E. And this. What is that? Child. Ugh. So, sorry. <laughs> Nothing against children. We've had uh, neighbors move in. We've been childless all around our house for. Decades. Since we lived here, like 11 years or so. And all of a sudden, all these children have moved in. And great. Each day is a gift. But it's just, it's so weird having no kids to having kids all over we've got the, all the time. And then we've got the yappy dog. Oh, that dog. I love animals. We love dogs, but this one barks at every single thing. And they take them out eight times a day. Which is good. They're getting exercise, but it barks at every single thing. Anyways, we sound like two bitter neighbors. Uh, I don't Aaron, know our you neighbors. made that? I did. So this is the <laughs> Storyteller Gal Gang by Ethan Pyle. And this was so much fun to make. It was a learning experience because there was a lot of slip stitches and then you pick up those slip stitches. Again, it is a paid for, paid for pattern. And this is made in a DK weight. This is Black Trillium's Thundercloud yarn. And it is the perfect yarn for this project. Uh, lots of golds, some blues and browns in it. Uh, slip stitches, you do that a couple times and then you pick them up. I am a visual learner, so gang, this was only $2 pattern. So that is incredibly cheap for something that is kind of like this. Um, if I made it again, I think I would have made it a little, there's only one size, but I think you could probably edit it and bring it back a little bit. Um, I think I would have made it a little bit smaller because it's doing that whole out like this. Which again, if you wear a jacket, you have to have to tuck it in. So I think I want to make it just a little bit smaller so I can kind of make it tighter mm. or make it bigger and then you can kind of wrap it around. <laughs> but um, visual learner. So when it talks about picking up the slip stitches in the pattern, I went into Ravelry and some uh, lady, she's the very first person that has her uh, information on Ravelry for this when it says under projects and who's done it. Her name is MS, MSWHIT34. She had a video to a YouTube on how to pick up those stitches because that made more sense to me than the pattern did. The patterns went in great, but again, I'm a visual person. So when you pick up these things, I suggest that video if you do buy this pattern. Again, it's $2, so why wouldn't you buy this? I mean, it's amazing. I had some friends on Instagram help me because I got to the very end and it just said bind off and I felt like I needed a stretchy bind off. I don't even sign, sign my bind off is, which is actually great. You because know what? Which side my bind off is. Oh. Cast on and bind off or vice versa. Because I wanted a stretchy bind off. Um, a lot of people suggested the sewing bind off, which I looked up, it looked pretty good. The Russian bind off, which I've never heard of before and just a bunch of other things. I tried the Russian one, which I think it'd be great, but it was making this kind of fan out and I didn't want a fanned out look. It's already big. Yeah. So after all was said and done, I ripped back, I did a few different kind of bind offs. I just did your normal, your normal bind off, knit one, bring it over, this knit is one, perfect. bring it over. And I just did it very loosely. This is so perfect right here. It is. It looks great. I'm like, it is. But uh, yeah, but I want to try the Russian bind off for something else and maybe the sew bind off. But going back through this, it just wasn't the right bind off for me for this project. But I am thrilled with this. Again, it is, I think I picked the perfect yarn for this project. And I would highly suggest it. I, Did we talk it, about what it, yarn this is? Yes. Okay. I said Black Trillium. Gotcha. DK, Thundercloud. Um, 
and I suggested it for anyone. It, it was a learning experience. Like, again, I've never, I've slipped stitches, but not like slipped stitches and picked them up. So I never made anything like this. It's not really waffle, was it waffle conish or whatever, but it kind of gives a nod to it. Love but, it. Yes, I love it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it for myself or give it to a friend or something like that because, again, another project I would not mind making again. Love it. We are in finished object land. Chip, I you did. made that? I finished a UFO that has been sitting on the pile for about a year. It was about the, this time last year that I made a, say the name for me. K-Facet. K-Facet, yes. yes. Um, I say it right all the time, then you say it wrong, and then it screws me up. Yes. So Cave Facet Fabrics, and I made enough of these blocks last year to make like four different quilts. I made one for a coworker for his birthday last year, and I, I finished ours. So you want me to stand as well? Yep, so we can stand. It is a stand up, sit down show. Yep, and so love it. It's Cave Facet and I'm trying to make it straight. There we go. It's K Facet, and the solids are by uh, connecting threads. And actually, I believe they're up here in Washington. Are they? Yep. So I love this. This is an extremely summer friendly blanket. This K Facet line, um, it's really, it's not a very heavy cotton. Um, and I think the weave is a little looser. So this is extremely, extremely light, and it's a, it's a good summertime, early fall blanket. Now, you started this a while ago. I started right? this a long time ago, and um, it started getting tucks on the back as I was doing it on um, my domestic. Like meaty tucks. Meaty tucks, and then I was like, ugh, I just, I was getting frustrated and put it to the side, and then I was like, oh, you know what? I can just throw that onto the long arm. So that's what I did. I literally finished this in three hours. Like all I had to do was finish quilting it. And it was just a, um, well for me, it was a horizontal line. I put the channel locks on so that the machine wouldn't go back and forth mm -hmm. uh, vertically. I just had it going left and right. So I just kept going left and right, left and right, left and right. And then uh, that was yesterday and then I like I had a couple rows to do this morning and then I finished the, the binding. I love this one. Now, the binding. Do you like chickens? Yeah. Do you like challenges? Mm, like challenges with chickens? No. I was playing binding chicken. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cause usually there's bobbin chicken. What else is there? Yarn chicken? Yarn chicken, yes. Yeah, so this was I binding chicken. I had um I had binding and I measured everything and I was like, I think I may have just enough. I literally had this much I discarded. Ooh. So I didn't have to make new binding. I used what I had for my stash, which made me happy. And yeah, so this one has no name. Um, it's kind of like, it just reminds me of Thatch. What's Thatch? No, T-H, Thatch. 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 Fletch, Fletch lips, <laughs> Chevy Chase. No. What's th what is thatch? I don't know. Well, then, how does it remind you if you don't know what it is? A thatch. <laughs> what is it? Like a thatch. <laughs> I don't know how to explain Say it. it in different tones doesn't help me. I, I, uh, that we'll put the definition right here. Dominique. <laughs> She's not gonna help you with this one. <laughs> what is thatch? Yeah. So uh, love it. And I, I actually, love it. I actually have enough that I could make yet another one. I'll take that one. And no, I'll take. I'll make this one. I'll make you the the one that's not half and half. What's half and half mean? Half well, janky, half not. Yeah. I like janky. I'm fine with janky. And this is probably not tall enough for you. Oh, true. I'm a little guy. <laughs> I'm a big guy. Yeah. This one is fifty nine by sixty three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would come up to my bosoms. Your bosoms. My, your yama. My yama. What's yama? Llama. Oh, my llama yama. <laughs> my llama yama mama. Yeah. Um, awesome. 
Yeah, so I made that. I know. It looks good. Look at all these finished objects. And you know what? I mean, you come here for the finished objects. You say, you I'm think I'm crazy for having that 14 incher. <laughs> I mean, oh God, 14 footer. <laughs> 14 foot like, long arm. I'm gonna whack out a lot of top quilt tops. <laughs> Let's well, whack out a lot of tops with that 14 incher. And we'll see. You see, you came for this show. This is what you get. Adio mio. So, uh, Aaron, you made that? I did. I got one more, but two things. Okay. So this is the Mitra hat by Shelly Anderson. It's so nice to Mitra. Mitra, it's nice to Mitra. <laughs> and last time I showed the wool folk yarn, which is their luft. And uh, it went around, it went along with this pattern and I enjoyed it. Let me start with the huh? The huh is my, when I closing, when I'm closing the hat, it's leaving like these little towers for some reason. Like I feel like it should be It looks rounder. like a cardinal's hat. I, like at, at, at the church that you have the cardinal. Who yeah. Had... And I don't think it should be like that. So once I, like if you don't touch it, Yay, look, it's rounded, but like if you just like straighten it out. Put a pom-pom on it. I don't think this is a type of pom-pom hat. Well, this is, I made this for you. So I don't this know. This one? Yes. <gasps> Wait a minute, is this the one I've been waiting on? Yes. The hatch hat? But, no, this is not the hatch hat. You said you wanted this one as well. You oh. want so many hats. Anyways, so, something, <laughs> I'm having so many trouble with my ethnos. Something that I did learn during this hat experience is the lateral braid. Never heard of it, never tried it before. I did it. Um, again, reading the pattern, I was like, huh? And then I found a lady on YouTube who actually showed you how to make it because she was making gloves. It totally made sense, except for when I tried to join the lateral braid. I made this one first. And I was like, I'm not happy with my lateral braid join. So I tried this one to try to knock it out and get it better. And it's not that well. Lateral braid, if you look right here, you can actually see that it kind of goes this way. So is that, I don't, what's that? Ignore that part right there. Uh, so yeah, it kind of follows, it goes that way. Uh, my join is about right here. And that just doesn't look good. This side, the join is so. What's the right huh? here? And the it's huh is bit... this and the join? Yeah, yes, this and the join. So I know it's user. It's not the pattern. I know it's me being user error, but I need to figure out how to join the lateral braid better, and figure out what the hell is going on with the top of the hat to give it that cone shape. But a cardinal, a cardinal shape. So that's why I haven't weaved in the end on this one yet, because I might take this back out and try again. But it's, it's <laughs> you literally have a nipple on the top of your head. <laughs> Do I? It looks like a nipple. See, I don't understand what I'm doing. And I followed the pattern and I even tried to make adjustments to like, well, maybe I won't go up as high and just kind of join it, whatever. But yeah, it's just, can I have a nipple? If Oh, I, I, I feel like a cardinal. Yeah. See, I don't understand what happened. And when I did my photo shoot a couple weeks ago, I would just went, I went, and pushed it down, then snapped the photo. Look, this one, boop, look, boop, boop. It's fine. Mine's fine. Okay. But yeah, but maybe it just needs to be blocked or something. I don't know. And I pulled tighter, I pulled looser, and wait, do you think it looks all right? It's a very nice hat. Thank you. This is very warm. I can't tell you what this yarn is because I do not remember. I know I bought it for a hat I was going to make my mother, oh my goodness, my mother a few years ago, but I ended up with the Brooklyn Tweed yarn instead, so I lost everything about it. But it's more of an Aaron weight. This luft is more of an Aaron weight too. I love the feel of this. Is this the stuff I bought? Yeah. And I can try it again, but oh, we'll just. I didn't do that. We'll just snip that right there but yeah this is the Mitra hat by Shelly Anderson it's a bulky thing it has a lateral brain you in think it it's it bulky? has one by one ribbing it's bigger than worsted oh the yarn itself yeah. I was saying it's not a bulky hat yeah 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 so um and it gives the impression that it is a folded brim but it is not because of the lateral braid I love it this is really really um, sweet basically I just need to that lateral braid, man, when you try to join it, that's the part that I'm not getting for some reason. But the rest of the hat is great, except for the top. 
And I went through and looked at some of the comments on Ravelry, and I just couldn't find anything about it. Well, that was, uh, I mean, hey. Uh, that's all I got for you made that. For a first timer, like going through it, it's a win. Um, you left yourself the end so that you can play around with it. Mm -hmm. So like, actually, um, considering that you probably have worked it, the yarn doesn't show any stress. No, 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 no. No, this was very fun yarn to use. And uh, I couldn't afford a whole sweater in this, but I would love to see a whole sweater kind of made in this. Actually, a cardigan. I see more of a cardigan. With this. Um, do I have enough for a scarf in this? Uh, I don't know. We can always get some more. You have two. You only have no. You only have two more hanks of this. And that's and not this enough was, for a scarf. This was almost a full hank. Really? Yes. Because that's a lot I of forget. Yard. I forget how many uh, grams are in there. So, yeah. Okay. So that's all we have. Do you want to talk about? Uh, well, we we gotta get we. I want to give praise where praise is due. Praise you like I should. We have a uh, celebrity in our midst. Tom Hardy. Where is he? Tom. Yeah, don't screw, don't lay on the floor like he's nothing. Okay, so imagine he had a sash that goes right here. Uh, right here. Yeah. Imagine if he had a sash that said Mr. USA Esquire 2020. I know the real Mr. USA Esquire 2020. And his face had Zach's face on it. Yes. Put Zach Stout's face on here and it would be Mr. USA 2020 Esquire. Yes. Congratulations. We are so proud. We actually know somebody who is representing our, our US of A. <laughs> Congratulations, Zach Stout, who has the Stout Stitch podcast. He's a crocheter, and he is Mr. We were United blown States. blown away. Like, he had to go through swimsuit. He had to go through um, the talk. He had to go through uh, formal wear. He had to go through... He sang a song he by sang... Dear, is it Dear Evan Hansen. I don't, I haven't seen it, but everybody says it's great. He sang a song from the play. I think it's a play. Oh, I'm terrible. I don't remember. But I watched him sing it. He did really well. He posted it. But So, Zach, we are so, so, so happy for you. Congratulations. I mean, I asked him like a month before. I'm like, so... He's probably happy just to have a carb again. Oh, my God. I he, think he quit carbs for a while. He really has been dieting, making sure that he's watching his intake. And <clears throat> they have... Challenges, not just um, the ones that I've mentioned, but then they also have to do like charity work and they have to do like it's a whole thing and it's it takes months for them. Um, so, like, and it was a different experience this year with COVID because they couldn't all be together, so they had to amazing. do it virtually, which we're very proud of you, Zach. We're very, we love you. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Um, why don't we go to what we've got coming up? Yes, we got things coming up. A thing. We got two things. Do we have two things? We have a knit along and that's not we. I have a knit along and I have um, a sew along that I, wa I want people to do. And we have. I know that. Okay, where do you want to start? You want to start with the knit along? Okay, go with your knit along. Okay, gang, I am, we are uh, participating in a knit along with some of our podcast friends and excuse me check your floor because i'm going to drop some names <laughs> so we are going to do a it's called knit one and done so basically all you have to do is take one heck of yarn it has to be over 50 grams you're going to knit one project you starts we're actually filming today sunday august 9th starts august 9th and it's going to end september 30th so you have that much time and you can knit a hat you can knit a shawlette, uh, a little cow, a pair of socks, maybe. Basically, it's one skinny yarn. Whatever you can get 50 grams in. 50 grams or more yep. of one thing, and then you're going to post it. Now, everyone has their own prizes, and I'll tell you who everyone is. I think everyone. So I don't want to say are, that, just in case. So it's not just the Fiber Hustle Boys. Yeah, it's uh, Carrie from The Creative Obsession which we love her. So on her Ravelry page, I think that's how you enter. If you follow her on her Ravelry page for the Knit One and Done 2020, I think she's giving away a bag that she made, which is gorgeous, and a gift certificates to Trilogy Yarns. Oh, really? Yes. Um, 
The boys of Needles at the Ready are doing it as well. I think they set up their own Ravelry page. I don't I think they don't, know what the hell they're giving away. I don't. They don't know what they're giving away yet. <laughs> um, Sweet Tea No Shade is also pr pr participating. And I think Betty Ann is going to knit you a top or something like that. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think she's knitting you a crop top, and the Sweet Tea Boys will send it to you. Check out their Ravelry. Um, Cody from Cody Knits. I don't know what Cody is giving away. Maybe him and Diamond will do a little finger painting or something like that. And then we have Nancy and Kathleen, who actually have a new podcast. Nancy from Trilogy Yarns. Kathleen is a knitting blogger, or yeah, blogger and writer. Um, it's called On the Needles yes. is their podcast. So if you go to YouTube, On the Needles. Um, one thing is they're going to give away, I think, a mug for this. Follow them on their Ravelry. But if you use one of Nancy's yarns, Trilogy Yarns, you will be entered in to win her advent calendar when it comes out in the holidays, which is a huge thing. So what are you doing? We are undetermined yet. We <laughs> talked about maybe Fiber Hustle in Bed. Uh, we would have a Zoom meeting where we uh, come to you for breakfast in bed. You provide the, the you breakfast. Make, you make your own breakfast. We stay in bed. <laughs> we Zoom. I actually don't know what we're doing. But who doesn't want Fiber Hustle in bed? Raise your hand. Okay, so oh, that's and a lot of you. you get an entry for every make yes. during so you that can, time. You can enter all those. I don't use Ravelry and set up threads. So what I, we are going to do is just follow everybody who tags on, on Instagram which is the Knit One and Done 2020. And then we're gonna go through it, kind of scroll through it and pick one. But as a also winner. they have to say Fiber Hustle. Hashtag Yes, Fiber, Fiber Hustle. Hustle if you wanna be a part of ours. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, I don't have the time to learn the whole Ravelry thing and group. And I know myself that I won't go in there too often. So we prefer the Instagram method. So again, hashtag knit one and done 2020, and then hashtag fiber hustle, so we know you want to be included in ours. And we will announce some kind of gift or present soon. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I mean, should we do an experience or an actual gift? I had an experience. That was amazing. <laughs> yes, that was a great experience you had. But yeah, so those are everybody that's, I think that's everybody that's participating. So yes, I have Carrie from Creative Obsession, Sweet Tea No Shade, Cody Knits, Needles at the Ready, and On the Needles, and us. So you can have your, as far as I understand, you can have your one make, one and done, mm -hmm. and enter for every, that goes into every one, but you have to tag or do whatever. Yeah, each yeah, one's you have to go in their rivalries and all that stuff. So you can repeat, and if you do two objects, then you get two chances, and you do mm -hmm. it through everybody. So, Correct. you know, maybe it's time to uh, you could bang out your Christmas. Gift. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. It's also a time to start your Christmas gifts. So I think I'm gonna. Or your holiday gifts. Oh, sorry. Yes, holiday gifts, Festivus, winter polls, whatever. Um, I think I'm gonna start your hatch hat. I'm gonna start and finish your hatch hat, but then you know I'm gonna make it, so. That's fine. Okay, I'm gonna make a hatch hat. I'll work on if your- If anybody wants to make a hatch hat with me, tell me, I think it'd be kind of fun because it's my favorite hat pattern to make. Maybe I'll make your thatch. <laughs> if we can find out what the F it is, <laughs> then you can make my thatch. Okay, so, um, that yeah, is eight, your- 8, 7 to 9.30. 8, 7 to 9.30. Perfect, so I am going to change gears, but also invite you guys to try a something a mini quilt challenge so <clears throat> i only subscribe to one quilting related journal it's not a magazine it's called curated quilts it's a quarterly quarterly journal and there is no advertising in this <gasps> delicious i love it and um i have issues four through twelve Dude, I need the one, two, and three, and they're out of print. So, um, if you could, any of you, like, internet, do your thing. Find me, not the digital, because you can still get the digital version, one, two, and three. I'm writing it down for Christmas. I want... Curated quilts? Curated quilts. Curated quilts. <laughs> we have tongue problems, though. Printed one, two, and three. Internet, do your thing. Anyway, Curated Quilts is, um, has a challenge right now. It's called the Plus Shape Challenge Mini Quilt. 
And it is. So we just went back past the picture of us. That yes. other fiber hustle made so, me laugh. Basically, here is the uh, the inspiration. You've got the colors, which are mint green, soft pink, peach, gray blue, and aqua. You can do a 10 inch by 10 inch mini quilt up to a 16 by 16 inch mini quilt. So I'm assuming it should be square. Um, no, you, I have a question. Hold on, hold on, hold You can do prints or solids. They must feature a few or all of these colors. So you have to you have to be within their color scheme. And it's all, you have to be, um, the, the mini quilt challenge is inspired by the plus shape. So you can do whatever. It's just a mini quilt. Uh-huh. And so it's still going to be sandwiched. So you're going to piece the top, sandwich it, and quilt it and then bind it off. Now, you can uh, submit your entry to Curated Quilts by September 8th, and they are gonna, sub uh, with every journal, they always pick 25 entries mm -hmm. to feature, they'll be, you have to, uh, they'll photograph and feature it in their, in their journal. So, 10 by 10 inches or up to 16 by 16 inches. That's a fun little project and I've already got ideas. So that really sounds fun to me. And so I would love if there's anybody else who wants to do it with me. That'd be fun. What was so your question? My question was, is it going to be like you have to make one square or can you make like one square with like all kinds of little things in it as long as it has the plus? As long as it has the plus shape. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> you can, you can, this is just think of this as your canvas. Do what you're gonna do. Okay. So you can even have like a little plus up here, and then it's you can do whatever you want. I yeah. Okay. But it should be all inspired with the plus shape. It should use the mint green, the soft pink, peach, gray blue, or aqua, or a combination of. Nice. It I'm excited prints. to see what you come up with. It can be solids, and I already have some ideas. I was thinking about. Um, using more of the cosplay to give some extra trompanto puffiness. Puffiness. Um, so yeah, so uh, we'll put information on all of these, the make one and done and the plus shape mini challenge will be in the show notes. Um, also, what are you working on, Aaron? Could you go 3D with it? I want like, to. Like, could you me. actually make a plus shape instead of like a flat? Probably not for what, how are they going to photograph that? That's not your concern. No. Is it a quilt then? I don't know. It would depend if it was like 1890, it would be not a quilt, but like in modern times it might be. I don't know. <laughs> it's like I just smoked some, and yeah, man. What do you What and, uh, are you working on, Aaron? I gang, <clears throat> get look at this. I am attempting to knit a sock. Can you believe it? <laughs> attempting is the word. So um, this for? is for probably you, okay? Because it's a test, and I can tell that my tension is too tight. This is the Vanilla Sock by Crazy Sock Lady, which I think Jeff is doing it as well. Jeff just finished his, and his are gorgeous, but I don't know what Jeff's feet sizes, foot sizes. So um, she, you can buy patterns individually, which is how to do it with nine inch circulars, how to do it with DPNs, or how to do it with uh, Magic Loop, or you can get the whole thing for $5. I bought the whole thing. I am trying this on nine inch circulars, which so far it seems to be going all right. A little thumb pain just because I got the arthritis. It's not much fun, but whatever. Um, How's your gauge? Well, Chip, let's talk about gauge. <laughs> so this week is not my gauge week. <laughs> I uh, am not even going to show a sweater that I'm attempting to knit. I didn't get gauge on a sweater, and I went up one size, and I got the exact same gauge. Uh, on these socks, I had, I think it's seven inches, one inch equals seven stitches, 
and I got eight stitches when I was doing the 2.25. So I went up to 2.75 and I am still getting eight stitches and I don't even know how that's possible. So I would die. I, I am, I'm like, what is happening? I, both times I go up in needle size and nothing changes. So I don't know what's happening with me this week. It looks good. Uh, but it does look good. I just don't know if it's gonna fit. So um, I went up sizes. I am at the uh, cuff and gusset. I just noticed that I did drop a little stitch right here. Oh. Which means um, either I need to somehow get it back here or I might just take this all apart, which is not that big a deal. And this only took me a pretty short time and to do it. Um, she does give you instructions how to do the cuff and gusset with nine inch circulars, but she suggested that it's easier with DPNs once you get to this point. Uh, I tried it first with nine inch circulars, then I tried it with DPNs and I totally agreed. It was easier once you got here to do it with the DPNs. Um, I'm just gonna knit this and finish it and see what happens, then kind of see where I am, then tailor it. Like, do I need to go up a needle size? Do I need to make, this uh, part longer and the foot shorter or longer. I just want to finish a gosh darn sock and then kind of play around what, what I need to do with this pattern to kind of do it again. But it's not looking bad. This is uh, Patton's Croy socks in the color way of blue striped rag, rag blue ray, so something like that. And I think I got this at Joann's maybe three years ago or something like that. I think it was just transitioning. I was like, I'm gonna knit socks. And I never did until now. So I'm sure I used a coupon with it, but it's the striping's coming up great with uh, the self-striping yarn. So I am so satisfied right now, still. Question, question. And I'm still, there are no questions Question, today. question. I'll be like, I'll just walk out. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Question. Question. Ship. Um, why aren't you doing two at a time? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Trump. Mr. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Uh, no. I just, um, <laughs> that's going to alienate some people. Um, because I'm doing nine inch circulars and there's no way I can do two with nine inches. <laughs> This show's going to hell in a handbasket. I tried, tried, tried not to laugh at that one. Uh, because I'm trying it this way. Apologies. Kind of. Um, this is what the show is. So this is, that's why I did it. But if I wanted to do two at a time, I could do magic loop. I could do, yes. With the long cord, I could do magic loop. And then we would uh, be there and all good. Yes. So no. This is so far my sock, and I can't wait to have it done for you. I don't know if I have two socks next time or just one socks. But so far, <laughs> one socks. One socks. But so far, I'm having uh, not too bad a time knitting this one sock. Um, I'm thinking about making the next one. I know it doesn't make sense because, like, well, it's going to be totally different on Magic Loop just to see if I prefer that method better or if my gauge comes out better than this one with nine inch circulars. Again, this is all playing around, testing all that good stuff. I am so excited for you. I mean, you're finally getting a sock. <laughs> one sock. One. <laughs> and that will be filled with catnip and Shame is gonna have a riot with That's it. like me trying to do sit-ups. <gasps> one. <laughs> <laughs> it is warm in here today. Okay, Chip. Uh, so I am. What not, are you making? I'm not making anything, but uh, I did get a little thing. Uh, we can call it this birthday. No, this is kind of an order. So we. Uh, it's been really, really hot, and um, last Plus. year. Oh, yes. Last year we went to um, Sister. Sisters Oregon for the outdoor quilt show, which th we were recommended to get one of their. Um, neck coolers, and it's like, a, it's like whether Fred it's from Scooby Doo, whatever that thing is, scarf cooler, or Mr. Furley, neck cooler, whatever. And you went and tried to find it in the garage from last year, and apparently they 
disintegrated or... Yeah, it didn't look like something you'd want to... There was a little bit of mold on there. We didn't take care of them. Yeah, we didn't take care of them. I think we just threw them in the side and they... You didn't want Aged. to put them... You didn't want to put them around. So we were trying. We were talking about, hey, well, why don't we just make some? So Aaron ordered these marble beads, Ooh. and um, this is actually a gardening product. So you would put some of these in your potted plants if you want to, um, I guess, go on vacation, and like just to, it retains water. And so literally. You take one level teaspoon of beads, and voila. Look at that. That is one teaspoon this of is, these little guys. This is crazy. And I'm telling you, it is so satisfying to play with. People with kids might already, I'm sure everybody knows about these, but we've never actually. If you are tactile inclined, if you want that it's so satisfying. I mean, just to put your fingers in it. They're bouncy too. They are extremely bouncy. And what's crazy is that you try to like, I try to squeeze pop Squeeze it. it and it's like, it's, it's hard. Oh, you squeezed it. I squeezed the Sherman. And, and what happened? The top kind of came off. Okay, so it didn't actually burst. No, it didn't. It just broke. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh my God, it is so. But like, now I my hands it. just feel so nice and cool in it. It's wet. It's really, really, really. Could you do some MSR or whatever it is? It's satisfying. It's satisfying. <laughs> what is what is um, Ray do? Yeah. It's satisfying. <laughs> do you like your hand in there? <laughs> See, you don't, I don't know. Um, so no. So you. Ooh, ooh, they bouncy, bouncy. So oop, oop. <laughs> We're losing them. So you put these and like literally, you, this would be an, enough for one handkerchief. And so I am going to make some neck coolers. And I'll tell you, when we were walking around Sisters Oregon they Lesson, great. they were so like, it was like an angel kissing on my neck. Yeah, because you, you knit like a tube about, I don't know, this long to get uh, around your neck. I would sew it. Sorry, you sew a tube, <laughs> then you put those in, you soak it in water for like 30 minutes or so, then wrap it around and it keeps it cool. Oh my God. And then you just kind of move They're it. They're non-toxic? Yeah. So like, I mean, like you just, this is so nice. Yeah, I think you're a little too involved in this I style, like it. though. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's not soap. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's refreshing. It is kind of refreshing. So yeah, so I'm gonna make um, some neck koozies how fun! Yeah, um, I probably would have ordered the just plain clear. Well, I did not. Um, but you said that they were not really available. Yeah, something was wrong with them or something. They weren't on sale. Oh! I can never pass up a good sale. No, but these, these were. So I obviously wouldn't use like a, a white or anything that the color would pop through. Um, but yeah, if you guys have ever made any of the uh, the neck koozies, please let us know any tips, any videos that you yeah, like. What recipe you liked with yours, and because they're really good. They're when we had them last year, we enjoyed them. And oh my god, I'd like to have one before summer's over when I work in the yard. Yeah, I would just like to have one for in the house. <laughs> <laughs> this is our air conditioning. Yeah, and so, um, do you have any had to have it? No, I bought a couple sweaters worth of quantity because Serial Knitters, my favorite yarn store, is closing. Couple sweaters worth of quantity. Did I, that's what I said? Yes. What is wrong with me today? It's because I got to go back to work tomorrow. It's been a week and a half and I'm just, I don't want to. I mean, can't wait to see you guys. Um, I bought some, I don't remember what, a blue sky fiber, um, some sweaters quantity worth because everything was like 30% off. So I said, why not get it now? But I don't have it here to show. Okay. I, I, I don't. So you'll just have to wait until it comes to you in sweater form. Or working. I'm sorry, what? Or when you're working on it. Yes, when I'm working on it, yes. Okay, so uh, I have one more head to have it. Then we have an announcement. We do? Yes. So I, I am a huge, huge, huge Amanda Murphy um, fan. And she, her new good measure, she says major, Good measure. Uh, her new oval long arm quilting rulers. 
<laughs> just came out. So I got those. I have every one of her, um, every one of her, her rulers. And these are excellent because they have all of these registration marks and there's a nice, um, it's kind of rough on the back, but it's still opaque. So you would be able to see through and look at your marks on the court on the quilt. So if you're using those registration marks, I mean, like these are the best. This is for the long arm version and she does make one for a, um, a sit down. So it'll, I think the, the, it might be a little bit shorter uh, or a little bit skinnier but this is the long arm version. Nice. But Bon, uh, and we, we can put uh, a link down to Amanda Murphy's and you can check out all of her rollers. Mm -hmm. But what's coming up? <sighs> but, but, but bingo. It is, it is. Uh, bingo, we are having another one by popular demand on August 23rd, which is a Sunday at 1 p.m. Daylight savings time, which is weird. So I don't know what, so Pacific savings time slash daylight saving time. We are in California, Oregon, Washington time zone. So Pacific daylight savings time. Pacific daylight savings time. Yes. So uh, West we've, Coast. we've already got a couple of interested people, but. Yes. Up to 25 people. Up to 25 First people. First people that let us know, uh, slide into our DMs or you can, um, Instagram DMs, I can email us at fiberhustle at gmail.com or let us know by Facebook or I guess you can let us know in the comments below. Yep. But it's first come, first come, first serve. We've already got some uh, prize donors. We do have some prizes that are going to be arriving hopefully this week and we are very excited to give those away. Once it's a good time. Arrive. So it is a good time. Quarantine bingo with uh, your your fiber friends. So what's the last two last two times? Last about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit. About longer. an hour and a half. Yeah, three games bingo. What is there not to like? Yeah, you get to hang out, meet people. A lot of people do their crafts while they're bingoing. So just let us know, and we will let you know if we can get you in. I don't know. There might be like thousands of people that want to play. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to handle that someday. Oh my God. We'll have to do just bingo after bingo after bingo. So for all the new people who are just arriving to the party, we put you through some stuff today. We did. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed everything. This is what you get. This is us. I still have that half a donut over there. I'm sure it's going to be consumed right when this turns off. Momentarily. Oh my gosh. All right. What else do we got? Anything? That is it. That's it? That's it. That's the whole show. That is the whole kit and caboodle. Wow. Okay. Live, work, pose. Pose. And pose. And pose. And pose. <laughs> all right. So, um, yes. So, uh, I yes. hope you all are doing well. And too. thank you too. very much. If you stuck around this long, uh, I hope you had fun. Uh, we've hope got you enjoying your summer. We've got a couple of other things that are, are going to be in. Uh, Produce. So I don't think it's going to be quite as long on, on our next podcast. I don't understand what that means. Like we're going to have a podcast in a shorter time. Yes. Our podcast will be shorter. Maybe both. Yeah. We hope we don't go too much without seeing you. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. So thank you uh, very much for joining us again. Look for all the show notes. We'll have everything, all the information there for you. If you want to play bingo, please let us know. Dominique, you are a goddess. Thank you so much. That was amazing. It was. And Johan, play us out.